Hey everyone, we're going to be continuing our code speedup series with a different topic about rolling means. So here's the setup and why you might want to care about rolling means in the first place. Let's say you have a list C and each element of C is how many calories you ate every single day, let's say for a year. So it's 365 long or longer, for example. And your goal is to kind of get an idea of how your number of calories eaten has gone up and down over the course of the year. So you want to generate some kind of graph like this eventually, where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the number of calories you ate. But um, from actually doing this myself, um, tracking your calories, you find that the number of calories you eat from one day to the next can be pretty variable based on if um, it's a Thursday and then it's a Friday, it goes way up, or it's like a Sunday and a Monday, and things can change a lot between one day and the next. So a lot of times what you care about is the rolling mean, which means you're not plotting um, the number of calories you ate every single day, but maybe you're plotting some kind of rolling average. And for those of you who aren't familiar, a rolling average is basically saying that if I have some list, the rolling average is computed as the first element is always the same. The second element is the average of these two elements, so whatever average that might be. The third element is the average of these three elements, whatever that average might be, and so on. The effect this has on a time series or a bunch of numbers is that it kind of um, smooths out the curve. So if this was your original curve of calories eaten, if you plotted the rolling, the rolling average, um, and a lot of times you'll have a rolling window, but for the simple purpose, let's just say that you're just taking the average of the first k days, where k starts at the first day. It helps to kind of smooth out this curve, so you can still sort of see the dynamics of the curve but all that jumpiness is kind of taken out of the picture because a lot of times you don't care about that jumpiness. You just care about what's the shape of my curve in general. So that's the motivation for why we care about rolling averages. How might you compute it using code? We're going to be using Python slash pseudocode for um, these examples. So uh, for example, we might initialize a rolling means list, which is empty. And then of course, we'll need to calculate this rolling mean for every day from uh, k equals 1 to the final day that we have in our data, right? So we say for k in range len c, those of you unfamiliar with this, this is basically just saying go from the first day, second day, all the way to the last thing in my list. Calculate the mean of my list up until that day k. So this notation is just um, take my list and stop at day k and calculate the mean up until then. And then just add that mean to my rolling means. And this will actually work. This, there's no problems here. It'll work out just like you would expect it to. But the problem is how many computations are we doing to get there? To do that, uh, to figure that out, let's look at what we actually do in this mean function, which we kind of just took for granted. Um, if we're trying to find the rolling mean for the kth day, we add up all of the calorie counts up until the kth day and we divide by k, right? Pretty simple. That's what a rolling mean does. Now, this requires how many additions? This requires k additions, of course. So we have k additions and one division. Now, if we take k from 1 through 2 all the way to n, where n is the last day, then we have a total of, uh, let me put this here, n divisions, and we have n times n plus 1 over 2 additions. How did I get this? Well, it's basically just saying on the first day we have one addition. On the second day we have two additions. On the third day, we have three additions, so I'm adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. And if you remember that formula from your algebra classes, um, it's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. So in general, I'm doing something, sort of something like n squared additions and n divisions. So because it's n and n make n squared. So that might not be ideal. It's going to slow down. Basically, that means that if I double the number of days that I'm looking at, the amount of time it's expected to take will not double but it'll do something like times four because I have this n squared thing over here. Um, I would like a more linear behavior to this. Let's see if we can take advantage of the mathematics of the problem to rewrite the code in such a way that it's gonna be a lot faster. Um, so what if I wanna calculate the rolling mean for the k plus first day? Let's say I already have it for the kth day. I've already thrown it into my list of rolling means. Let's say I'm calculating the next day. Of course, the formula just changes by putting k plus ones everywhere, but let's rewrite this a little bit further. This is really sum from i equals 1 to k of ci plus ck plus 1 over k plus 1. What I did in the numerator here is I just split out this sum. I took the last element of that sum and put it by itself, and the rest of the elements are here. Now this shows up right here, 
right? In fact, if I rewrote this guy a little bit, I would get that this sum of ci from i equals 1 to k is equal to k times rk. So I can just replace k rk right here, and I could get k rk plus c k plus 1 over k plus 1. Now this doesn't seem like I did anything that crazy, but um, we just did a very insane thing for our optimization. Um, if you look at this formula here, this is a k, uh, this is an r. In order to find the rolling mean for any given day, you only need to take the rolling mean from the previous day, do a single multiplication by the number k, add the new calorie value you have, and divide that whole thing by k plus 1. What are we doing here? Here we're doing one multiplication, right here. We're doing one addition, right here. We're doing one division, right here. And if we're doing that 1, 1, 1 for every single day for n days, what we end up with is n additions, n multiplications, and n divisions. And if you know a little bit about how computers work, you know that multiplications are very optimized. It's not like it's literally doing all of those additions. It's doing it in a much smarter, much more compact way. So we can see why having n additions, n multiplications, and n divisions is much, much more preferable to having something like n squared additions and n divisions. So that's what we want. We just need to rewrite our code to do that, and it's not that hard. So we rewrite the code in this way. Let me put a box around it because it's got a little messy going through this code. It starts the same, oh, this is part of the code too. Going through the code, we initialize the rolling means to be the first number of the calories list, because as we said, the first rolling mean is always just the first element. Then we go from k in range 1 to length c, because we're going to start with the second uh, rolling mean, because we already have the first one ready to go. Each given rolling mean is given by the previous rolling mean. This index negative 1 means get the last element of that list. So the previous rolling mean uh, times k, so actually I forgot that, so it's a good thing we're going through this. So uh, k times that rolling mean plus c at k, right? So that's what that's doing right there. Divide it by k plus 1. And that's going to give me the new rolling mean. And I simply just throw that rolling mean into my list and go about it that way. And that's going to be a lot faster. But don't take my word for it. Let's go to the code. All right, so let's take a quick code look at whether the second attempt we tried is actually faster than the first method we tried to make sure that this is true. Uh, we're going to be using Python for this analysis, and I'm just going to need to import two things. The first is the NumPy library, which is going to help me do some operations on the lists. And the second one is the time, so that I can find the time that each of these methods takes. So the first thing I'll do is initialize a big list of numbers. It's 20,000 elements long, and they're just some random numbers. This is the list that we're going to be interested in taking the rolling averages of. Uh, so here's our first attempt from when we did it on the whiteboard. This is our naive attempt. So we go ahead and start the timer. This is all commented for your benefit, but I'll explain it as well. We initialize a rolling means list to empty. Here it's called rolling means 1 because this is the first attempt at this problem. Then we enter this big for loop. So for each k in 1 to the length of the list plus 1, we go ahead and calculate the mean up until index k. So this notation, if you haven't seen it, just means take all the numbers in my big list of numbers up until index k, and then store the mean of that in this variable r, and then simply append this rolling mean to my list of rolling means. Then at the end, I just get how much time this took. So I'm going to run this fresh. I'll probably speed this up for you guys because I think it takes about 15 to 20 seconds or so. All right, so we see it took about 16.2 seconds. Now let's go ahead and try our second attempt. This starts in very much the same way by initializing a timer. Then we uh, start a rolling means 2 list. It's called rolling means 2 because this is our second attempt at solving this problem. And it's not empty here. We're going to initialize it as the first element of our list of numbers because remember, the first element is always the same as the first rolling mean. Now we do a slightly modified for loop. So for each k in one to length large list of numbers. So we're doing one less iteration here. The reason being because we already have one item in here. Uh, so here's where the meat of this problem, uh, this efficient solution comes from in this mathematical formula, which we drew on the whiteboard. You take k, which is the current iteration you're in, times the latest rolling mean you have. So this notation, if you haven't seen it, just means take this list and give me the negative first element or the last element. So we take the most recent rolling mean we have, multiply by k, add the current number that we're looking at in the big list, and divide that whole thing by k plus 1. We take that new rolling mean, we append it to our rolling means 2 list, 
and that's it. We just do that for every iteration. At the end, we calculate how long it took. Let me run this fresh. Lightning fast. It took 0 0.02 seconds, about. Of course, let's confirm that in both cases we get the same answer so that we can set our minds at ease. One way we can confirm it is if we take our two rolling mean lists and take the element-wise difference, we take the absolute value of the element-wise difference between these two lists, it should be very, very small, right? Indeed, it's 6.05 times 10 to the negative 16. You might be wondering, why is it not zero? Well, because of how the computer computes means some, sometimes, uh, because we computed it in two different ways, it's gonna be a little bit different numerically, but we see that little bit is not significant at all. Um, let's also make sure the two means are the same length. So the two rolling means are 20,000, which makes sense because our initial list was 20,000. And let's print out the first five elements of each to do a last sanity check. We see that these rolling means do match up to each other. So we're confident that we got the same answer. And our second method was how much faster? If we take time one divided by time two, we get it's 850 times faster than the naive attempt. So this just goes to show that if you just make a small edit to your code and think about if you can use previous answers to get your new answer, you're going to get a huge, huge speed up. Okay, so until next time.